What's going on everybody? I hope everybody had a great weekend. So today, we're going to talk about the Jerry Gonzalez Yambu. So to all the new subscribers, Welcome to A Percussion Life. My name is Eric Perez. Some of y'all already know that by now, but I just had to welcome you to the channel, man. Thank you for subscribing, and I do hope that you enjoy these videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, just hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, find out whenever I'm uploading. And yes, we upload videos every Monday and every Thursday, something new, something different, something fresh, and it's normally things that you, request and to all my day ones woo me numero uno me numero uno me numero uno y'all already know man i got so much love for you guys comments all the suggestions all the messages the videos you guys tag me on instagram man money man i've gotten some about mozambique some about ralph mcdonald seriously that kind of stuff like really motivates me it makes me to see you guys attempting this kind of stuff, man, it's just like, it's beautiful. I, I love seeing the learning process is what motivates me as a musician, man, to just keep on going and sharing just a little bit that I know. So thank you guys. Seriously, I appreciate you guys. So, Jerry Gonzalez. If I get a little bit emotional, please forgive me. But uh, yeah, if you don't know who Jerry Gonzalez is, um, I suggest to you... <laughs> You know, just go to iTunes, go to Spotify, go to Amazon Music, wherever you could stream music and just look up Mecure, look up Rumba para Monk, look up Manny Oquendo y su Conjunto Libre, look at the stuff he did with his own group for Apache Band. And Jerry Gonzalez is by far one of the most important figures when it comes to the evolution and pioneering what we know now as Latin jazz. This guy was the most diverse musician I ever seen, ever got to listen to, and a big, big influence on being okay to play unique. I remember my first time really watching him, and I think a lot of people my age probably first saw him when this, and it was in uh, the documentary film of Calle 54, you know, 54th Street. And I saw this guy playing the trumpet and then having a set of five beautiful congas just right in front of him. And then the middle of him just crushing the trumpet sits down and just kills those five congas. And I've heard his music and I've I've heard about him, but I never really saw the 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 unique approach he had on the congas, man, I, by far. I mean, we could sit here and debate who is the greatest, who is the greatest of all time, who is the the best overall conguero. We could, we could sit down and debate all day, but we have to say that Jerry Gonzalez is by far one of the most unique congueros that have ever lived. His approach was his. He, he You cannot mimic him. Uh, I remember when I first started doing this series of covering different tumbaos of different conga players, and one of the first requests that people gave me was on Jerry Gonzalez. And I'm talking about earlier this year, like back in February or March. People were re already asking me like, yo, cover Jerry Gonzalez, cover him doing this and cover him doing that. And I was so hesitant because to me, like, Jerry Gonzalez is in that Mount Rushmore, you know, one of the greats, you know, up there with Carlo Patato Valdez and Candido Camero and Tata Wines, simply because of his take and his approach of playing was just, just not ordinary. It was just so weird, so different, but so much flavor. Jerry wasn't the most technical. Jerry wasn't the fastest guy. Jerry didn't have the greatest independence in the world, but man, his feel, his tone, his slaps, ah, like you, you, you have to understand that Jerry Gonzalez was in in a league all of its own. You know, he he played with Tito Puente, he played with Paco de Lucia, played with uh, Diego El Segala, he played with 
Dizzy Gillespie. He's played with Manny Oquendo. He's played with, dude, like everybody. Jerry Gonzalez is a guy that I was very intimidated to show simply because he's very hard to try to interpret. You know, his feel, the way he positions his hands was different. His musicianship was different. Everything about his playing was different. And um, I remember October 1st, I got on Facebook. I usually don't go on Facebook in the mornings. And I woke up and I see this trend. And I see that there's a news saying that Jerry Gonzalez has passed away. I didn't believe it, man. I, I, I really post things on Facebook like that, like to ask a question, to say a statement. or And I had to ask, is it true? Did he really pass away? Because he was a living legend. He, he was a guy that you, you would just hoped and wished to see live and hear him and touch the congas he played and... and see his transition going from the trumpet to the congas, to the congas, to the trumpet. You know, to be a virtuoso on two instruments and be able to witness that is is something that, you know, as a musician, you have those type of goals to see and to witness and to be a part of. So when he passed away, and the way he passed away, you know, it's like, um, those are things that, that bring you to reality. And um, make you think, like, wow, you know, that could happen to anybody. And at the same time, you know, it could happen unexpectedly. You you, you could wake up one morning and say, man, this person's gone in your life. And I regret not doing this video before his passing. I, I regret not being able to pay homage to him um, while he was alive. And... Um, that's something I think that's going to bother me for a while uh, because I I did want to uh, honor him the right way. If you're in the New York area uh, today, they're actually going to pay tribute to him in the St. Peter Church. I think um, Sakai Curtis, Ruben Rodriguez, um, I forgot who else, but they're going to pay tribute to him at that service, and it's going to be a beautiful night. I'm not sure of the details, but I think it is in the evening. So if you're in the New York area, please check that out. It's going to be probably something very special in honor of him. Um, I'm also going to link a video from here somewhere of a video that Conga Head did. Um, I thought that was pretty amazing that... that um, all these people came together to pay tribute to him. Jerry Gonzalez did things musically for all of us. And um, I remember that day, I, I just, I, like literally maybe the whole week, I just played all of his albums. And um, I'll, I'll link some stuff below that. If you never heard who Jerry Gonzalez is, you'll be able to hear how he lived and hear how he contributed to what we have today and the music he gave man i remember having the vhs of his instructional videos of rumba man and i was just like wow you know vhs some of y'all never didn't even have vhs some of y'all remember vhs vhs man i had that tape and i remember seeing how we played and how he just kind of incorporated everything just the fact that he took the time to kind of just show these different patterns and show these different feels and um, really bring along his his artistry to the world and be willing to kind of share it in that way is is special to me, man. So um, this is this is for Jerry. So today we're gonna talk about his yambu. Uh, I've had a request in the couple of requests in the past uh, to break down his yambu. Uh, he has a clip of that actually in the Rumba instructional video. Sound like that. For those that don't know what yambu is, it's a very slow style type of rumba 
um, from that branch of rumba. It's played in rumba clave, of course, and uh, it's it's very melodic in such a way with just two congas. It has so much feel, but I'm gonna try to show you how he played it and kind of have some discipline to not go off the feel that he would always incorporate. He always had this, I don't know, man, these extra little touches that he would give things and it was so hard to emulate it because he would place it in different places. So yeah, so the pattern I wanna show you guys is this. also wore glasses every time he played you know he always had them uh, cool shades on man just uh, uh you know you gotta have it ah jerry was that guy man Woo! so let me show you what he was doing the pattern in itself is pretty simple i think the hard part is to retain in the pocket but it's a rumba it's meant to be full with feel and with so much emotion feeding off you know this is normally played by three people again you know you're trying to do three people's parts i may show something of the quinto where you could place it at the end of the video so he starts the yambu with one open on the tumba then he does a you would say finger tap uh, it's very noticeable though, but it adds accents, but he does it with his left hand and does like a finger tap and then an open with his right hand. So it's going to sound like this. Now, sometimes with the finger tap, what he will do is he will replace the finger tap with an open. So it'll sound like this. So just to put that part together with the finger tap or the open, so you can hear the difference, it's gonna sound like this. After doing that open with your right hand, you're gonna move your left hand and do like a palm base in the center of the drum or kind of like near here towards the edge if you want. Jerry had pretty big hand so he didn't really move much but after doing that you're going to do really you're just gonna lay your right hand it's gonna do like a finger tap it's really a, a ghost note if you want to be technical but it's a noticeable one which is gonna help you transition to the next part so it's gonna sound like this so to put just that part together it's gonna sound like this After doing that finger tap, you're going to do a finger tap with your left hand, kind of just resting your left hand, and then you're going to do an open on your tumba. So to put that part together. And then to really finish the whole yambu, what you're going to do is, after doing that open on the tumba, you're going to do a palm bass and then a finger. So it's gonna sound like this. Since your hand is still on the tumba, you're gonna do another finger tap on the tumba and then do a bass with your left hand on the conga. So just to hear that little section is gonna sound like this.
And then to go back to the whole pattern, you go back to the open on your tumba to start the whole yambu again. So to put the whole pattern together, it's going to sound like this. Now to play it through, it's going to sound like this. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Jerry was like that, man. And if you notice, I just added a little bit more accents, a little bit more feel. It just adds to the yambu and just adds a little bit more kind of, of the conversational piece that you're having, trying to interpret three people playing. Now, uh, to understand it, where this goes in clave, you could obviously play the da 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 you know, slower. So da 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 Or if just get to do rumba clave. So that first tumba to conga hit falls right after the first two hits of the rumba clave. Now in the video that uh, I noticed um, Jerry play, he was doing some Quinto playing here too. The benefit with Yambu, especially being able to play it by yourself, it's a very slow rumba. So you're able to kind of like add some Quinto hits and make it kind of more interactive and, and make it seem more like there are three people playing. The benefit is that there's so much space between the first tumba and the conga hit then going back to the next tumba hit. So you have to be able to count the time and the measure that you have until you go back to the first tumba and conga hit. So to kind of give you an example of how it's gonna sound, it's gonna sound kind of like this. Jerry was like that, man, and um, uh, this is for him. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Condolences to his family. Condolences to everybody that was dear and close to him. Um, this, I do this with all respect and all like humility because Jerry was that person for me, man, where he was just unbelievably unique and so influential in his music and his creativity. So... 
this Yambu does not compare to how he played it. Uh, may he rest well and um, may his music live on forever. All right, y'all. Y'all already know what to do. Like, subscribe. I will see you guys on Thursday. Have a great week.